Welcome back to Mad Props. Apologies for the viewers. This is an audio only. If you listen on audio already, you're in luck because here we are. We are on audio only. Coming up on the podcast, we're going to have a Kendrick Lamar and Drake part two featuring my guy, Kyle Scott. Uh, I brought him on. He's a big hip hop head. He actually works in the hip hop uh, world. He is a producer. He's worked with some artists. Some artists you've seen on the Schnabel Studios pages, T-Rex and Tyrant, Chris Taylor, um, and other people. He produces beats for them. So I thought we'd get his perspective on everything after the pop-out show that happened recently with, uh, with Kendrick Lamar and get his thoughts on everything. Before we do all that, remember to subscribe to the podcast, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts, or if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give us a comment. Give us a like. Give us some stars if they have stars. We really appreciate it because the more we get from you, the more we can put out. So definitely do all that. Share it to your friends. Um, put us on the map, please. Make sure you follow us on social media. We are at Mad Props Pod on Instagram and Facebook and at Schnabel Studios everywhere else. That is right. There's no more Mad Props Twitter account or X account. It is just a Schnabel Studios account, so we can kind of combine everything. It was it was getting repetitive on two accounts, so we just made it into one account. So go follow Schnabel Studios on Twitter if you want to find not only everything Mad Props, but also you'll find everything Schnabel Studios on there, including any videos that we put out or anything like that. You can also visit our page online, schnabelstudios.com slash at Mad Props Pod. Actually, there's no at, just slash Mad Props Pod. And you can listen to any of the podcasts there. You can watch the latest podcast. You can also see articles that are written, although we've been slacking a little bit on that. Um, and, and so much more on that website. So head to schnobstudios.com. If you want to see Mad Props, go to schnobstudios.com slash Mad Props Pod. Thank you guys so much for listening. We're going to get right to the podcast so you can hear all of the great stuff we have to talk about with Kendrick, Lamar, and, uh, and, and Drake. If you haven't already, we did do a well, at the at that time, we didn't know it was part one, but we did do a part one where you hear my thoughts on it, my initial thoughts right after the beef ended. Um, that'll be linked below here, so you can go listen to that as well. All right. Before we get going, you know what we got to do. Play them credits. This is Mad Props. <laughs> What's up, Kyle? What's up, boy? What's happening? Cause yeah, what's up with you, boy? You're so if you're listening, which you definitely are, because this is an audio only episode. Kyle's back. Kyle Scott is back on the mic. We haven't done really any podcast. We, well, we haven't podcasted together since what? Like, did we do a sketch it up before we we stopped doing that or? Was it was it when you came on Mad Props last time? I think I mean I think we did a sketching up one sketching have. up and it's yeah, 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 and yeah. It was, I was gone. I'm just, yeah. yeah. So what you've you been busy. What have you been doing? Man, so like I'm in the process of moving. Mm -hmm. I'm in the process of moving schools. Like I'm getting a whole new whole new life facelift. So and 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 not not moving states or anything like that. No, moving no, no, schools no. within Georgia. Just, You're still a Georgia boy. Yeah, for a little while. St still out there doing your thing. Well, that's great. Well, for anybody that's wondering, I'm still a little sick, which I may have already said, but I'm already I'm still a little sick. But uh, pushing through it. I've been sick all week, Kyle. If you don't know, I've been sick all week and last weekend and the end of last week. Like the same like cold and cough and all that stuff. So. Just oh pushing through, putting out these podcasts day after day, no matter what. Just, I'm, I'm just pushing through. This already has sketching up energy to it from when, it back when it was just us. <laughs> Man, dog, those days. Those were fun those days. days. Those were fun days. Hashtag COVID. But where I brought you on to Mad Props because we've had an episode already about Kendrick Lamar and Drake. But I brought you on because, like... You're you're the hip hop guy, like you're the rap guy. You're you're not not saying I don't know anything about any of this, but like you produce beats. You you physically are intertwined in this world, and it's been 
I mean, when did that start? Like a month or two ago? And, and we haven't mm-hmm. heard anything. We haven't heard anything from you about it. So I took this opportunity to bring you on the pod to talk about Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. And I'm excited to have you on here. So have you been following all of Kendrick Lamar versus Drake, a little bit of Kendrick Lamar versus Drake? I know you've you've we've talked about it off air a couple of times. So I know you've been you've had it on your mind at some point. Oh, yeah, man. Like I was it was funny because um, Chris, who I um, Chris Taylor, dope Chris Taylor. He was actually sending me all of those songs in real time. Every time it dropped, he was send it to me and be like, question mark. And I'm like, all right, bet. Let me go look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just living that whole thing was so crazy because this is one of those moments where you know, you know you're going to end up telling your grandkids about it. Like, you know you're going to tell your grandkids about, like, yo, I watched one of the biggest rappers of – my time get this mantle on TV. Drake literally could be considered the biggest rapper like ever in 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 terms of streams and sales and numbers mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Like you could say whatever you want about him lyrically. I know a lot of people don't like to consider him a rapper, but if you're talking strictly numbers, like we're we're talking probably he, he beats a lot of artists, not just not just rap artists, but artists. Out mm-hmm. out of the water and a lot of things like take away what like Eminem for rappers and he he may even pass him in a lot of that stuff. But uh, so so let's start with the simple questions. Then we'll really get into it. All right. So which which track? Well, I guess when you say the biggest rapper get dismantled, you are on the side that Kendrick definitely tore him apart, which I don't even think is a side anymore. But um, <laughs> you were on that side when the songs released, at least. Yes. It was kind of evident. Yeah. It was kind of like, like at first, for me at first, it was like Kendrick was winning at first, but it wasn't like so bad before the um, before Meet the Grams. Like when he did like Family, because like Family Ties was, was, you know what I'm saying? Family Ties was fire. Like I'm yeah. not going to hear a lot. Push Ups really was fire was. too. Push Ups like, was good. I, I said it in the last podcast I did about this. I thought that Drake was – he was putting in his – well, whether it was Drake or Drake and his 50 associates, they were putting in their – they were putting in their work. They were doing a good job. Like, push-ups was really good. And fa- the, the funniest thing is – and I don't know if you agree with me. Family – was it Family Matters, right? Family Matters and then Meet the Grams. Mm-hmm. Family Matters may have been better than Meet the Grams as a song overall – but the fact that he put out a song in the morning and then 20 minutes after he put out Family Matters, he put out Meet the Grams, it didn't matter. He could have done the poopity scoop Kanye. Like the fact that he just did it, like it didn't ma- like it mattered, obviously, what was said in the song. And he made the waves by saying, like, you have another kid. And, and that was clearly not true, which we'll get more into that stuff later. But like it, it, it didn't matter how fire or not fire the song was going to be the fact that he put something together and was able to release it right when that happened. And it had the same concept as, as, as Drake. Cause he, like he said in the, the, in euphoria, like, I know how you're going to do this. Like you're going to go after the family and do all the, and you're going to make up stories or take stuff from songs and act like it's fact. And then you're going to put it. And then, so he just responds with a family song to go against his. So I, I think the same thing though. I, I thought both, Family Matters and Push Ups were good pieces of diss work by Drake and his associates. Oh, hundred percent. Like, like Push Ups had me. Like when I first heard Push Ups, I was over there laughing, especially when he was like, "Now drop fifty, give me Push Ups." Like I was over there in my in my thing, just talking about some hoo. Like it was hilarious. So like, I can't get mad at the attempt with Drake, but it was just like. First, Meet the Grams was so... First off, you're right, that it it dropped 20 minutes later because I was like, you got to be serious. You can't be serious. Like, you got to be kidding me that Buddy really just dropped the whole song with the same type of subject matter in yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah, the same minutes. concept. It was the same, same exact concept. concept. And I was like, man, that's wild. And then just the fact that he sent Buddy to therapy and then was talking to each family member... In that Meet the Grams, I was like, geez. Listen, like, 
conceptual like, storytelling, Drake between uh, between, Kari, between Kendrick is not even close. All of Kendrick's stuff is conceptual storytelling. It's all giving painting a perspective, whether it's a true story or not. It's all storytelling. Drake is never storytelling. So trying to go storytell for storytelling is not a not a good approach for Drake to start. Oh, not at all. Yeah. But then, you know, obviously he hits him 20 minutes later and and that happens. Um, but then after that, we have uh, I don't even know what the name of Drake's last disc was. The heart part six. The heart part six. Yeah, the heart part six. And I knew it was something with heart, but it didn't matter because what he talked about in the song is really, to be honest, the reason Drake lost is because of that song. Like he, he was going, to, you know, he was coming back. He was he would get hit, and then Kendrick could hit, and then he'd hit, and then but then he made a song kind of denying everything, and then he name drops Millie Bobby Brown, even though nobody else in the entire beef has said anything about Millie Bobby Brown specifically. Obviously, there's rumors and stuff, but nobody has said anything. So we're all like, uh, nobody said that, Drake. Like, where, where are we getting these names from? Or are you just saying these names? Like, he kind of buried himself with everything he was doing, saying he's too famous to be a pedophile, which is, like, the stupidest thing of all time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about? There's like, been many, many examples of many. this. Many like, examples of this. Like, the reason why you haven't gotten caught yet is because you're a celebrity, Playboy. Like, yeah. It's yeah, like literally, Playboy. Was, yeah, <laughs> like, that was what was so funny about that whole ordeal. It was just like, you realize that, um, you know what I'm saying, you're kind of famous. And we and after we all just watched that Quiet on set, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So well, it's like quiet on set. What about the what was it Harvey Weinstein? Not, not Harvey Weinstein. Uh, um, Dan Snyder. So Dan we're, Snyder. We're, we're talking no, about but, rich people though. You know, yeah, how we're he's talking like, about, oh, I'm too rich, and these... I would have got found out. Like, nah, broski. The reason why, like, yeah, you're, yeah. you're getting found out right now. That's what's happening. Like, yeah, it's it's all it's all been in the same thing. But yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, Kendrick didn't even respond with an actual song. He responded in other ways which we'll get into in a little bit, but he did not respond with the song because he's like, it's not even worth my time anymore. Like, this dude, this dude's now, he's not giving blows back. He's now hands are up trying to defend his own, defend his own face. So mm-hmm. it's just like, eh, you know what? The, I'm, I'm out. So so that you thought Kendrick won overall, uh, but you didn't, you, you said you liked a couple songs. What was your favorite one of all of the songs? I ain't gonna lie, not like us is my favorite song, bro. Because that's yeah, such a bop. Very good. It's such a bop. Pick. It's such a bop. Like, and I hate to be cliche like that, but it really is such a bop. Like, I'm still playing it now. Like, even though I did like Euphoria, I did yeah. I did like Euphoria. Like, okay, like if we're talking about regular just song song wise, Family Ties is my favorite. If we're just talking about just normal songs. You know what I'm saying? Not like us. I like not like us just because it's kind of like hit them up for me. It's kind of yeah, like a new version of hit them up. Supposed to be a, it was supposed to be a, a club anthem as a diss track. Yeah. So like, and yeah, and not like us was like the nail and the dagger. It was like the dagger and the fucking yeah. I'm sorry, it was, it was the dagger and the heart. It was you know nail what I'm saying. It so the it's like, the and then and then also what made it even worse. Was the whole pop up show with the Kenan friends? Yeah, we'll we'll get to that in a second. We'll oh, get okay. to that in a second. We'll talk more about that. I I said it on the last one. My favorite one was Euphoria, and he, the biggest reason is I'm not even talking song wise. I'm not talking anything. Euphoria had the most factual, fact backed up by fact things out of any song by any artist. Like everything that he said in that song. You can find a clip of somewhere online in an interview, or you can find somebody talking about it, or you can just find the actual event that happened. Like he, he didn't like uh, the 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 problem with this beef, and I guess we can get into this right now as we talk about why I think Euphoria was the best one. The problem with this beef was that there was just so much that was false information and accusations, which is just like 
as 2024 as a rap beef gets, right? Like mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that was said between Drake and Kendrick was not true. It turns out not to be true or can't be proven whatsoever. Even the whole the pedophile minor thing, like it hasn't been proven or anything like that. But now everybody's on board with saying it, and it's a catchy song and it's the most trending thing. A minor, like everything mm-hmm. like that. Like it's just trending. But it's never been proven either. But Euphoria, like, and if not everything, almost everything in there, you can you can refer back to something where you can find it online. I always bring up. He talks about how he he fucked uh, Lil Wayne's girl while he was in jail. There is a full interview with Lil Wayne, and there was a question where they asked about that, and like Lil Wayne is like visibly upset, not mad, like sad like because they were they're supposed to be like these close friends but then when he went to jail instead of drake you know holding it down he immediately goes and bangs his girl and then he and then to like make it up to him drake got like a little wayne tattoo to be like oh i'm sorry and it's like all, all everything about that story is so so screwed up because like lil wayne if it wasn't for lil wayne there is no drake right like mm-hmm. he found him he 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 promoted him and and Drake came in at just the right time when young money and cash money were like at the top of the game when everybody was like kind of in the middle like the older generation the TIs M&Ms all them they were kind of like they were kind of not towards the end of their careers but they were in a different yeah. a different era yeah. of their careers and then the now the younger generation was in like that mixtape era where like they were getting big but you the way to get as big as you do with Lil Wayne and Drake, uh, and Drake is to release albums and go on tour and all this stuff. And all the rappers really weren't doing it at the time. You think of like the Big Sean's, the Two Chains, all those guys. They weren't they weren't releasing albums at the time. It was the mixtape era, right? That's the Dat Piff era. And mm-hmm. I think it just all came together really well for Drake to blow up. And then he turns around, and does this to Lil Wayne, like <laughs> when he's supposed to be holding down everything for him while he's in jail. He completely shows that he's not loyal to him at all. And that's completely backed up by interviews and, and stories and all this other stuff. Like there's facts out there that show that. And 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 Euphoria is catchy. Musically wise, it's catchy. It's got good beat changes. It's got a good flow. Like he mimics the, like the Drake style in it to kind of show like, hey, I could take your style too and I could do it like this. Like I, I just thought it was really well put together. It was really well thought out. It was really well done. And it was a really good way for him to really start the beef, like, you know, outside of the subliminals and stuff like that before, like, and um, like that and control and all that. So that's why I liked Euphoria the best, personally. But what did you think about, what did you think about, like, all these false accusations that everybody's throwing at each other just to make just basically to make twitter headlines right like that's all they were trying to do they're just trying to to get people to talk about it well i mean it's the same thing with the pock and big thing like with the whole like first off um like when he said that he slept with faith evans like all this is have some sort of salaciousness to him so like I understand why both sides would say something that would be so salacious where you kind of be like, you know what? That kind of makes sense that he said that. There's you a difference saying? between saying I slept with your wife and you bang kids, though. Oh, yeah. Big difference. Oh, I mean, hey, bro, <laughs> salacious is salacious. Either way, like, hey, but, okay. Oh, oh man. I'm not going to throw no names out there. But remember my roommate we used to have that we used to say the same thing about? Sure. <laughs> sure. So the, two different levels there. Yeah, Us saying very, like, oh, this levels. dude can do this, and yeah. someone saying on a song that has 750 <laughs> million views <laughs> this is a much different level to do it. I'm just saying, bro. To me, you know, I know, I know the scale is different, but it's the same situation. I guess, but I, 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 I agree with you. Being fallacious. I, I agree with you that every song like this song's going to have things that aren't true because you're just looking for whatever information you can. But I think the problem with this specific beef over other beefs is like Drake, for example, I don't know where Kendrick found his stuff. Cause there's that, there's the rumor that Drake sent somebody and that, that was the whole thing with uh, the heart uh, part six, right? Is he said, uh-huh. we sent you all that information. Everybody's like, 
you sent Kendrick that you bang kids? Like, why would you do that? <laughs> like, like, yeah. Why would you? Why would you send that information? That makes no sense. <laughs> so, like, that was the. But he was getting it from somewhere, clearly, right? Mm-hmm. But Dra- all Drake stuff was like it seemed those either like he found like some Twitter person that said it, or he just misunderstood songs that Kendrick did. Like a big, a big one. In uh, again, I think it was the Heart Part Six. I'm gonna keep bringing that up, I guess. Mm-hmm. The, a big one in the hard part six is when he's talking about how he got molested as a kid because of um, the song, one of Kendrick's songs. And in the song, it, it clearly says that he did not mm-hmm. get molested as a kid. And it's like, well, he just misunderstood the song and then put it in a diss song. And like, none of that makes you look good, you know? So, yeah. <clears throat> but, that's also what did it. For me, that's also what did it. Cause I'm like, first, it was just like, yeah. We get it. You got called a pedophile, so you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, go low like he went low, and I get that. And it was just like, if you didn't misinterpret the song, then I might, I would have been like, I I get why you went there, and I wouldn't have held it against you. Like, I'll be honest. Yeah. Like, if he didn't misinterpret that song, and then it's like... well. I don't even think that's not the first thing for me. It wasn't the misinterpretation that threw me off when he and said that he, that he fed the rape. information and we're like, you know, yeah. he called you a pedophile, right? Like you fed <laughs> him that information. That's just it, it, it's either the, the actual dumbest move you can make or the biggest lie you can tell. But yeah. it's one of those two. You know what I mean? Like it, it made no sense. It made absolutely no sense. It's just, yeah, and it's one of the, like, even when I was listening to Heart Part 6, you could tell he was kind of with the whole hands to his face, trying not to just, like, get his face hurt. Yeah, he was, he was throwing blocks. Like, he was not, he was yeah, not. You could, you could kind of tell he was throwing a white flag, and he was just like, you know, he was like, ah, this was some good exercise, but, you know. Yeah, I don't and know I'm if he was like, throwing a white flag, but I th- see, the problem is, we say he was he was holding up the gloves, but I think in his mind, the way if you listen to the song, the way you the way he talks, he thought he was throwing punches. Like he thought by saying like oh, I fed you the information, you fell for us, haha. Like he thought that was a punch, but in reality, to us, it's like oh, you're trying to deflect a punch. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like when he says I didn't sleep with Millie Bobby Brown, he's like oh, look at that, I'm not a pedophile. It's like. No, that's you're deflecting again because it's an accusation he made. Also, you just name dropped somebody. No one has name dropped anybody yet. Mm-hmm. You just did it for the first time. <clears throat> so that's that's where we see it as defense. I don't think he saw it as a defense. I think he saw it as he was throwing punches back. Like he was like, oh, counterpunch. Like that's what he thought. Counterpunch. But we're all like, no, he has the hands up. Like, stop hitting me. Like, I, I can't get up right now. Yeah. So I, I think it's just two different perspectives of what what we were looking at there. Very true. Very true. It was just like that whole um that viral clip from me that get up. Like <laughs> <laughs> that kills me every time. That kills me every time. But like, yeah, man, it was like I even liked um the six sixteen in LA. Like I re- I even liked that song. Um but yeah, man, it was a so, so we went over a lot with uh, what happened during the beef, and we all know what side you took. And well, I mean, yeah. you could listen. This is a part two for this podcast, so you know I I took Kendrick's side. I was a bigger Kendrick fan. I, I I like Kendrick as a rapper. I like you know there were some Drake songs I enjoyed. There was plenty of Drake songs. Let me, let, me, not, let me not act like I didn't like Drake at all. There were plenty of Drake songs I enjoyed. But not as a hip hop fan, more as a as a music, you know, as as mm-hmm. you, know, you have people over and you're trying to put on something everybody's going to listen to. You put on a Drake song. It's very poppy. Like, so I I was bigger on Kendrick anyway to begin. I've seen them both live as well. And at the time. So this is at the time they're about the same time, actually. It was when we were would have been I would have been a f- Sophomore? No, I've been a freshman in college. So you would have been your last year of high school. I saw both of them. That's right when they were co- both coming up. Uh, Drake just dropped over. What, what's mm-hmm. that off? Um, um, what is the name of that album? I don't even remember. 
I don't, I don't even remember what the name of that album is, but it had oh, over man. has fancy. It has. Uh, it's not thank successful. me later. Isn't it's not thank me later. It's oh, no, it thank fancy. Me later? No, fancy is on thank me later. But I don't think I don't think over is. I don't know. Whatever. It's one of his first albums. Let's just leave it at that. Yeah. And I saw him in, in Florida, and he sold out the O'Connell Center, which was the basketball arena at the time. And then I saw Kendrick with a friend of the show, Chandler Williams. We he went to play at Cortland and at like a college show. This is right after Good Kid, Mad City just came out. I actually I still have the shirt in my room somewhere from that. So. I've seen them both. I like them both, but I've always liked Kendrick more as a hip hop fan than Drake mm-hmm. as a hip hop because Drake's hip hop, <coughs> although it does pop. exist, it does exist early on in his career. He has some like it's still kind of like a poppy flow, but it's definitely more hip hop than what he's done later he on was, in his career. Like to me, he was just more of a singy version of Kanye at first for me. Yeah, but I don't really, like did, he, did he use auto tune in the beginning? I don't think he really no, used auto tune. Like, but when I mean like Kanye, you remember how when Kanye f- first came out, he was kind of like the rapper who wasn't a gangster, but he hung out. Yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. Like he had just, that whole deal going on. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what Drake had going on for me. Like Drake that's why easily. I like Drake. I like Drake, Drake because easily. I like him with the melodies. That was me. Yeah. Like, I like. Don't get me wrong. There's a, there's some rap songs from Drake I really like. But, like, the stuff that really got me liking Drake was, like, um, like headlines, like... Yeah, um, yeah I'm around that same era. Like, it was more popish. Because yeah. I was like, you know what, dude? I like it. Because, like, it was, it was great to me. And then when he started getting a little bit into his hip-hop bag at some point, I was like, you know what, dude? This is pretty cool, even though I know you're a pop dude. But I get it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're you're mainly like you are a pop artist, but you do it through the vein of hip hop. So I get why you would try to do the purest version of it so you can prove to people you can rap. I get it. Like in this, so, you know. I think I think Drake could have taken many routes to where he got to, and he took the one that got him the most success. Good for him, right? But yeah. he he came up as a rapper and he was around the same time as a lot of backpack rap, and a lot of backpack rappers were not gangsters. I mean like you, you look at you know yeah. Kanye's like the, the forefront of that, and then uh, Mac Miller would be a part of that. Childish Gambino, like these guys weren't gangsters, but they were really good rappers, and it was very lyrical. That, that's my favorite kind—a beat that just repeats the entire time, and people just throwing lyrics through for three minutes. That's my favorite type of rap. Um, but you didn't have to be a gangster at that time. But he decided to go the other way, where it's like I don't need to be a rapper; like I can. I can make these songs and make pop songs based pop, you know, pop just means popular. I can make these songs that are going to be radio hits and, and become even bigger than I am. And that's what he did. And he did it successfully. And I'm sure young money gave him a little push on that as well. Like, listen, you, you, you should go do that. But I mean, remember even early on when he was still kind of rapping and he would do the singing, people hated it. People hated when he sang. Hated it. They hated the songs where he sang. They're like, don't, dude, don't sing. Like, we don't want to hear you sing. Now it's like, dude, don't rap. We don't want to hear you rap. <laughs> it's it's weird because it's like a lot of people was disingenuous to Drake when he first came out. Like, I can, it's watching him now, I can understand why he turned out to be the quote unquote monster he became. You know? Yeah. Like, because, like, the entire time he could do no he could he could do no right. You know what I'm saying? Like if he sung, ooh, why are you doing all that singing? And then if he was rapping when he first came out, oh, you're not really a rapper, you're a Canadian. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, oh, you you, you make girl songs. Like so that was it's just like, people that was just people covering up that they liked them. Yeah. You know, no one ever says they like Jake. No one ever says they like Drake, especially men. No man ever says they like Drake. Or if they do, they're super fanboys, right? But mm-hmm. no one like no one likes Drake, yet he has over 10 billion streams or whatever it is. So like that's just not true. Like, like people are just um, closeted Drake fans. Like I have I have take care of the I have take care of vinyl. I have the vinyl of take care. You know what I'm saying? Like in my like I would show it to you if I if I if my if my camera. But like <laughs> this wasn't like, audio. I like take care. You know what I'm saying? Like, I liked when Drake, like, especially when he first came out and he was singing, like, you remember me, like, I played Nothing Was The Same. Like, yeah, 
And you nothing know I love gangster rap. That like, was the like, first album, wasn't it? No, nah, th- nah, nothing was the same. Was like for me, like that, that was, was the third like album. His, that's the one yeah, with him, like his him on the desk, like with the with the hand on his chin or something like that. I think that's the one that came out when I saw him live. Was nothing was the same. That that had headli- headlines on it. Headlines was take. Hold on, I think headlines was. Take oh care. man, we're all over the place. Oh, we're we're oh, here we're, we're, we're here talking smack about Drake and don't even know nothing about him. <laughs> okay, so take care. So take care had headlines. So take care okay. was when I became a Drake fan. When, right? What's because, what's his what's his first album really quick? Um, that was um, that was thank me later. Thank that was me later. A, that was thank me later. And then okay. he had another one. See, I'm about to go. I was trying to do it off the top of my head. I was trying to do it off the no, top of my head. No, it's okay. I, I didn't know off the top of my head either. So we're, we're on like, the same boat there. Hold on. Let me go. Let me let me be in let me be hold on. All right. But while I'm sitting here looking it up. Yeah, you you um, I, I'll look. I'll look. Pete, you do that. But look, we have un, so on take care, right? You got headlines, which I love. Okay. I like Over My Dead Body, but people used to call me soft for it, but it was what it was. I don't even know like if I know Crew that love. one. I like Crew Love. Like we, I love Take Care. You know what I'm saying? Like Take Care was was classic to me. Thank Me Later. So, so far gone, Thank Me Later was the one that had Over on it. Because that had Fancy, Over, Light It Up, Miss Me, and Thank Me Now. And find thank your me, love. Th- thank me later and find your love. Yeah, that find that's his love. first actual album. Yeah, thank me later. So was his far first gone album. is a mixtape. Yeah, and that had successful on it. The song successful, and that's that was like one of the first ones I've heard by him. And that one also ha- that also had I'm going in on it, and then so far gone was the one that had best I ever had on it, and those are considered mixtapes apparently. Yes. Yes. So far gone was a mixtape. Take me. I think those first two was the mixtapes. Then take care was like the album album. Gotcha. Because Lord knows was on that song. The motto was on that album. I love the song cameras. Like it's a great album. Just like nothing was the same for me was a classic. Nothing was the same was when he was the, um, we had the, the painting. It was the painting with the face in the blue. Yeah. Sky. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Tuscan Le- bro, Tuscan Leather? Still one of my most favorite Drake songs right now. You know what I'm saying? Like started from the bottom, Wu Tang Forever, Worst Behavior, Connect, 305 to My City, The Language, Come Through, Pound Cake, Too Much. Like, Broski was really making songs, bro, before he be- tried to be a gangster, man. And it really it's funny. Like- it, it what's funny is like, I'm not gonna lie. And maybe it's just I'm not as I'm not really as big of a Drake person. You you just read off that whole thing, and I think I knew four, or three, or four of those songs. That's it. Like some of it, those, you were like saying, I'd be like, I have no idea what that is. The thing is, it's like like I'm I'm not a Drake fanboy, but I'm an actual Drake fan because I like I like Drake for what he was. You know what I'm saying? Like when yeah. he started, like when he started to like link up with like all the dudes from Atlanta and all of that. Like I was rocking with it. I was like, all right, dog, I get it because that's kind of the music of the time and starting to pop off. Trap music is starting to pop off. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you kind of cemented yourself as an artist. Like I get why he was trying to go the more like little more street route. But then when he started calling himself like, oh yeah, I'm a five star general I'm this. I get you whack. Ooh, 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 ooh. I was like, dog. That's that's not you, dog. No, but he and he put on that persona for so long. It was it was over from there. Like he had to do that. Yeah, I don't think he had to because he could have kept doing what he was doing. It would have been I, fine. No, no, no. I I mean like he he could have kept doing what he was doing. But I mean, and it said in in go to go back to bring this all back to the beef. It's said in. Um, not like us, where he would go to Atlanta and and basically hop on whoever the hottest Atlanta rapper was at the time, uh-huh. and it, yeah. because he was doing that, he needed to keep up that persona, and that's where you really saw that switch of like what you're talking about now was when mm-hmm. he went on that per- to be that persona because he kept getting guys from like Atlanta to 
or or, or wherever you know the south basically because i guess travis scott would be on there too but he's from houston but yeah and he did the that, whole memphis thing like oh my dad yeah. from memphis and he did the whole memphis rap for a little bit and it's like i got like when it when he first started doing it me personally i was just like i'm gonna give it to you this one time just because you gave us some real good songs and he wasn't overtly he wasn't it was it didn't feel as phony because it was just like okay yeah we get it you 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 hang around these guys okay cool it was kind of like when i used to watch wale like when wale used to try we used to cross over a little bit sometimes here and there yeah. i took it as the same way because well, he like because he's been doing it since since he can remember right he did it with that whole crew too Khaled, yeah. wale i don't know if he ever got with like akon or ace hood but that was that crew remember that southern that mm -hmm. south crew pitbull was a part of that he didn't get with any of those guys though, but he did do Wale because because he did Rick Ross, mm -hmm. he did he did uh, Khaled, yeah. He did he, to be completely honest, he did the Jay Z method. Yes, he did. He one hundred percent did the Jay Z. Find method. who the hottest rapper is, act like you're co-signing them, get on a bunch of their songs to stay relevant, and then when you're done with them, go to the next person. That's what Jay Z. I mean, dude, Ether came out in like nineteen ninety nine or two thousand one, somewhere in that area. Dude, we're talking 24 years ago that song came out, 25 mm -hmm. years ago. And he was talking about Jay-Z doing that. This is before, like, the Blueprint and all that stuff. and Or, well, the Blueprint 2 and all that stuff. But it, it's early on in Jay-Z's career, and he's talking about how he jumped from jazz to big to puff to this. Like, he just keeps jumping mm -hmm. on whoever is going to get him the most views. And, and then... Here we are, 2000. Let's jump to 2009. Jay Z gets signs J Cole to be on the song to do the hook of Star Is Born. Mm -hmm. Stays on him for a minute, throws him to the side. Does it with Kanye, throws him to the side. Man. Like that, he. It, it's just the same. It's the same concept. He used Kanye a few times. Yeah. Well, like, I mean, Kanye did all his biggest albums, right? Did all his yeah, early man. albums. Did the Blueprint. I. That. That, that's another day. That that'll be another man props. We talk about that, but that was that was something that hurt my heart a little bit because I was like, y'all was the perfect rapper producer combo for me. Yeah, at least you know what I'm saying. Well, like, it, I think it's definitely a. I know you like conspiracies, mm -hmm. right? Do you th you know maybe you won't get too into it, but maybe it's one you can think about. I'll say what the conspiracy is that when Kanye got into his accident, it messed him up mentally. A lot mm. of people say when his mom died, it messed him up mentally. And that's kind of where it all started. But like, how do we know he didn't get into his accident? I mean, he had to have his jaw wired shut. Right. So like, sure did. dude could have had CTE. Yeah. So Easily. anyway, you, you look into that and then we'll get you back on when you, when you've done your research. Cause okay, I know you man. like your, I know you like your conspiracies. You know, I do. So I, I do want to get to quickly before we wrap up here, because um, I don't want to I don't want to you know keep you for too long. No, but I we were talking about the concert. We we're talking about the the pop up show or was it pop out show? Pop out yeah, show. Pop, yeah, like the pop out show. Yeah, the pop out show where he started with Euphoria and ended with not like us. Everyone says five times, but it was six. It was six mm -hmm. times, and the sixth time was at the very end. He played the instrumental, Not Like Us, as everybody's walking off the stage. He brought up all of the West Coast. Um, he brought up Russell Westbrook. And I think DeMar DeRozan was there. And my favorite thing is LeBron James was there, but was not brought on stage, which is <laughs> like... The Did you see those memes? So hilarious. Yeah, the meme of him talking to the girl, and, and it says, like, I hope this is the exact moment he was told he's not getting on stage. Oh, like, so on mine, the memes I seen, it was like you seen LeBron was like, "Hey Savannah, I'm finna go on stage," and you see the little cash for Savannah, and she says, "Boy, you are not from Compton. We are from Ohio. You're gonna keep yourself <laughs> right here." Oh my God, I was dead. So, <laughs> is that who everybody was? Because like I I know like Russell Westbrook is from there. Is Demar Derozan from Compton as well? Is that why he went on stage? Yeah. Okay. Like, so I, that's where I was. I knew I knew Russell Westbrook was right because that's like 
that's really like out there that he had a really tough upbringing and stuff like that. Like Russell Westbrook's story is pretty dope, but yeah. I, I didn't know why exactly. And also he's in LA, like what Russell yeah. Westbrook's already in LA. He's with the Clippers, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure why DeMar DeRozan was there. I didn't know he was from Compton, but yeah. like when I saw it, I was like, like why are there LA Clippers on stage? And then out of nowhere, there's, <laughs> There's Demar Derozan, but so, everyone else is from Compton that was on stage. So I guess that makes sense, huh? From what I've seen online, apparently Kendrick gave priority to L.A. and Compton. Yeah. So he was just like, he wanted he wanted that show to be basically an all L.A. show, which I get. Which I know I know we're running out of time, but I want to bring this up. Go ahead. Just maybe we could talk about it next time. I seen somewhere where they clipped that video of like all the Compton thing and it said, I miss regionalism in hip hop. And I said, you know what? I understand that sentiment because for the longest time, everybody sounded like they were from Atlanta. Just like yeah. a few years ago, everybody sounded like they was trying to be a, you could thank a, a Drake New that. York drill rapper. You, you can know? thank Drake for that. The, the, uh, Atlanta one. You can probably think yeah. for the drill one too, because what you're talking about is when he was jump. That was like the end of our, towards the end of our college, and he was mm -hmm. jumping on all those New York drill songs. He was just so big. Whatever he got on also got big. Yeah, and that's so why everybody was doing it because like, I just oh, this is I'm, big. I like the um, I like that regionalism is starting to come back because now like, like I hear Big X the plug right. You would like him. He's from Texas. I think he's from Dallas. You okay. should go listen to him. Um, okay. Like when I when you hear him, he sounds Southern, but he doesn't sound like he's from Atlanta. And he has this whole. Oh, you can listen to the song Texas. It's it's like I've never been to Texas, but if I felt like a rapper from Texas, that's what it would sound like. Shoot it to me. Send it to me so I can listen. I bet. To Yo, he has a whole get. He has a banjo and a guitar in the background. Okay, and he's rapping over it. It is fire. What do you mean? There's been regionalism forever. You, you, I, everyone and their mother knew where Yellow Wolf was from. I know, but I wanted to come <laughs> back though. I wanted to become more, you know, like prominent. Anyway. Where like you're from, D, you know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 I used, I used to love the uniqueness a lot of people had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. And and the best part about it is like. Well, the worst part about it not being regionalized now is because it makes all the music sound the same. Like you don't you don't have like you don't have this different different uh sounds coming from different places. So everything you hear sounds exactly the same where it's like why do I why would I listen to XYZ? XYZ sounds exactly like ABC. Like mm -hmm. why would I do that? But when it's, you know, and, and, and then you can also have artists it's like they have a huge following, but you're like, I, I'm not a big West Coast music guy or I'm not a big Southern music guy or whatever. And then it's just it just opens up the music space so much more when you have different sounds from different places. But I get exactly what you're saying. What happens now is whatever whatever sound is big is what everybody does because they think that's what's going to get them big. So you have mm -hmm. millions of people trying to do the same same sound and then. Five years down the road, it's because you're right. It it didn't even start with Atlanta. It started with Chicago because Chicago was the yeah. backpack rap, and that's everybody was coming up was a backpack rapper. I mean, you can even talk about the when Ace Hood was coming up and so he was from the South. He was doing that kind of rap, like he was doing over a repeating beat, same thing. Yeah, Mac Florida. Miller, Mac uh -huh. Miller is not from in that. He's from Pennsylvania. He was doing the same thing. He he was one of the elites at it, but like. He, there was a Chicago sound. That was the Chicago sound. Yeah. So I agree. I'd like to see that too. I'd like to see you somebody know. come back with some old school New York beats and really just s serious lyricism for three minutes. That would be great. That's my favorite what I type want, of rap. I just want people to go back to being unique and not mm -hmm. unique for no. the sake of being unique. Good luck unique. with that. I know, man. <laughs> I just, I miss like, you don't get an outcast because like like outcast did the boom pap thing but just Atlanta's version. Like that's what I want to hear. Like I don't mind if y'all are doing the, you know what I'm saying, the same subgenre of of rap, but just like you know make what I'm saying? Own. Like make if you're your from own. Yeah, just make it your own, bro. Like I love Travis because Travis took the chopped and screwed sound and mixed it with Kanye sound. 
And I'm like, you know what, Travis? I get it. You're a huge Kanye fan and you're from Houston. So you merged them together. I get that. That makes sense. So now you have a whole new thing. And then Travis Scott perfected his lane. So this is like every time people hop on a Travis Scott song or anytime Travis Scott is featured, they always want to go to Travis's world. Yeah. Because he created this whole world for himself where, you know, I'm, or I, let me not say just Kanye because he's also Kid Cudi. So it's like Kid Cudi is really more 808s and heartbreaks Kanye and Kid Cudi mixed with Houston. And I love it. So it's and, like, and look at the levels it brings you to, right? Look yeah. at the levels it brings you to compared to what it, you know, it brings mm -hmm. you to such different levels than what copying does. Yes, yeah, an overnight thing, success. I, and I and bring it back full circle. I think that was one of the issues with Drake because Drake doesn't have he doesn't have an actual sound anymore. Because like there was like during this whole beef, the reason why I think Not Like Us really popped off was because this is the first time we heard Kendrick sound like he was from like we knew he was from um, West Coast, but this is the first time he did something where we were like, oh, he it went sounded Mustard? West Coast. Like, it sounded West Coast. Like it sounded yeah. like a California a California beat. Right, and you could tell he was at home. You could tell he did that for like his hometown. Drake couldn't do that because Drake was, you know, what is Toronto sound? Right, like, like if okay, like let's say if Future was in that beef, Future could literally come to Atlanta and do a whole show, just like that. Like okay, you just seen what he just did with those with those two albums, right? Yeah, that second album, I'll be honest, that we still don't trust you. That wasn't for y'all. That was for us. Because that whole well, we still, second disc You Still Don't Trust You or Two was literally for Drake. <laughs> yeah. Everyone well, featured on it was someone that didn't like Drake. Yeah, but it was it was one of those, like the sound of it, like sonically, it was it sounded like old future. You know what Which I'm saying? Which was not by mistake. It was not, it was by, not mistake. by mistake. It Which, was it was done to exactly Kendrick's point of you came down yeah. and took the took the Atlanta sound just so you could stay stay relevant. Yeah, so it's just like I want everybody to go back to being themselves, and like I think rap would start. I think hip hop as a whole, as a genre, would start. You know, it would be a lot better. Not saying that people aren't. You know what I'm saying? But it's just just that conversation. Well, thank you, Kyle, for sharing your insights. We appreciate you coming on and give us giving us what you know about hip hop. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, Kyle, for joining. Thank you guys all so much for being here and listening again. Remember, you can find us on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram or Facebook, or you can find us at Schnabel Studios on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and on LinkedIn. Um, anywhere, basically, you get your social media. Make sure you like and subscribe to this podcast, whether you're listening on Good Pods, Spotify, Apple Music, or if you're listening on YouTube right now, give us a uh, subscribe. We really appreciate it. We really love uh, our returning people. Not We love the new people, but the returning people really appreciate because you guys are helping us stay afloat on the uh, content side of things. So we like that. So definitely do that if you haven't already. And give us a follow. Give us a shout if you want. You can talk to us as well. Thank you guys so much for listening again. Thank you, Kyle, for being there. This podcast was produced by yours truly. It is a Schnabel Studios production, and we will see you next week. Remember, we're on Wednesdays now. If you're listening not on a Wednesday, every Wednesday morning is when we release. All right, guys. See you later. This has been Mad Props. <laughs>